Hello everybody, welcome back to our final session on the learner portfolio entries and the last of our examples before just a final word on the entries. For today's session, we'll be considering the thematic essay, another key point and key topic of the learner portfolio, as it really allows us to engage in the themes that we're recognizing from different texts. For today, we'll be analyzing the excerpt of an example entry based on The Catcher in the Rye by J.D. Salinger and The Bell Jar by Sylvia Plath. So here's the excerpt. Both The Catcher in the Rye and The Bell Jar delve into themes of identity and belonging. But they approach these themes from different perspectives. Salinger's Holden Caulfield navigates his identity through a lens of adolescent rebellion and a quest for authenticity. Whereas Plath's Esther Greenwood struggles against the oppressive societal expectations and mental illness. While Salinger's novel captures the universal angst of youth, place where it critiques the gender's constraints of the 1950s, this comparative analysis illuminates the protagonist's journeys and the broader societal and personal challenges that shape their quest for identity. So the thematic analysis here is effective because it draws insightful connection between Catcher in the Rye and the Bell Jar, highlighting their thematic relationships. So we can see that the student identifies key themes of identity and belonging in both novels. And this thematic focus really sets up a structured framework for comparison. By pinpointing these central themes, the student has demonstrated a strong understanding of the core issues that both novels address. The thematic focus allows for a very coherent and in-depth analysis that reveals the complex interplay between the two texts. The comparison is not also not just about listing similarities and differences, but understanding how these themes manifest differently in each novel. And for example, Holden Caulfield's quest for authenticity contrasts with Esther Greenwood's battle against societal expectations and her issues with mental illness. This comparative framework is essential for a meaningful analysis that goes beyond that surface level of observation, a general list. So going beyond that list, we need to go deeper into it. Taking this further then by contrasting Holden's adolescent rebellion with Esther's struggle against oppressive societal expectations, the student demonstrates an understanding of how different social and historical contexts shape that character experience, that character development, which is crucial. This comparison delves into the deeper implications of each character's journey. For example, Holden's journey is marked by his search for authenticity, his resistance to adult phoniness, while Esther's journey is marked by the social constraints of the 1950s and her mental health struggles. The student's ability to explore these differences shows a very nuanced understanding of character development and the societal influences that shape these characters. The analysis effectively links personal identity to broader societal forces. And in The Catcher in the Rye, a Salinger presents a character who, despite societal pressures, seeks authenticity and self-truth. Whereas the bell jar portrays a character who is profoundly affected by the gendered expectations of her time and her mental illness. And illustrating how those external societal pressures can really significantly impact personal identity and mental health. Recognizing the bell jar as both a narrative of personal struggle and a critique on societal norms shows an awareness of the intertextual dialogue between the two works. The perspectives of the two really enrich the analysis by acknowledging how like Plath novel, for instance, challenges and reinterprets societal norms of its time. The, the student highlights that the bell jar critiques that restrictive gender roles and societal expectations that women faced, providing a very new lens through which to view the struggle for identity and mental health. By framing the bell jar as a critique of societal expectations, the student demonstrates an understanding of just how literature can serve as a commentary on and a critique of cultural context. This approach very much underscores the importance of considering how different narratives can offer different perspectives and how they can critique existing societal norms. The student's ability to recognize and articulate this critical perspective shows very advanced critical thinking skills. 
the way that the student has effectively synthesized these complex ideas between the two texts demonstrates critical thinking and an ability to engage with multiple texts in a meaningful way. They've shown that their analysis goes beyond that surface level comparison. The student synthesis, as we saw, of themes, character experiences, intertextual dialogue, provides a nuanced understanding of the text and provides a synthesis that is crucial for thematic analysis as it shows the student's ability to really weave together multiple strands of analysis into a cohesive argument. The reader's appreciation of both novels is apparent. We can see how much they've understood the two books and what they've taken from the two books. And really by highlighting the complexity of identity formation and the impact of societal pressures on personal development, the analysis provides a comprehensive understanding of the two texts. This nuanced understanding, this nuanced interpretation underscores the significance of considering multiple perspectives and contexts in a literary analysis. We can see then that although this is only an excerpt, it's only a beginning of a thematic essay, it does provide us with a guidance to how to continue, with points to consider, the general idea of how we should be progressing. And it serves as another excellent example for our IB learner portfolio, granted shorter than it should be, that it demonstrates an insightful connections, it shows thematic relationships, and a deep analysis of character experiences, alongside an understanding of the intertextual dialogue and the synthesis of those complex ideas. So as you work through your own thematic analysis, really strive to draw those meaningful connections, delve deeply into character experiences from the books, and recognize, analyze those intertextual relationships, synthesize those insights, those things you're thinking between the two books, really join them together. And in doing so, you will create a thematic analysis that is insightful, also really shows those critical thinking and analytical skills once again. That's the end of our examples. So let's finalize with one small conclusion. So as we reached the end of all these analysis together, we've seen the breakdown, what we should be including, and then examples of how to structure each. We can really see how this journey has been about more than just reading books, more than just writing essays. It's about immersing ourselves into a world of literature, understanding all those diverse perspectives, honing our ability to think critically and really express our insights eloquently. The, the learner portfolio is an essential component of IB literature. It serves as more than just an assignment. It is a very dynamic tool for both personal and intellectual growth. It is designed to foster real engagement with critical thinking. And through this breakdown that we've been going through, you now have the tools to explore literature in a more personalized and more meaningful way. It's not just about reading and writing. It's about really making personal connections with the literature that you're reading, with the text, really reflecting on those thoughts and expressing your insights. The learner portfolio is a fantastic space for you to really document your intellectual journey, to explore complex ideas and to grow as a literary scholar. So think of your portfolio as a living document. It's is one that evolves as you do. It's a place where you can record your thoughts, your questions, your discoveries as you delve into the, the tapestry of literature. It's a real testament to your dedication and it showcases your development as a thinker, as a writer, as a scholar, as you're reading, as you're progressing. It really allows you to see and view your development from the very beginning entries to the latter entries. As you continue to build your, your portfolio, remember that it should be a reflection of your evolving understanding and passion for literature. It's a testament to your dedication. It showcases your development as a thinker, your development as a writer. So really embrace every opportunity to delve into those texts, think critically, articulate those perspectives as you're reading annotate them so that you can go through later and really create entries that will truly mean something to you later. So the next steps, firstly, as we saw, 
beginning your reflections on the text that you've read. Make sure you take the time to really think deeply about the themes, the characters, the narratives, and how they resonate with you personally. Consider what the text says about the human experience, the questions that it raises, the insights that it offers, and write them down. All those thoughts that you're constantly getting as you're going through your reading, don't be afraid to explore those reactions and feelings about a text, positive or negative, as you're going through. Next, as we saw, start annotating those current readings with detailed notes. This will help you to engage more thoroughly with the material, and it will provide you with a valuable resource when you revisit the text later on. Annotations can include your interpretation, they can be questions, connections to other texts, personal experiences, reflections on the author style, techniques, the list goes on. Anything you're thinking as you're reading, write them down. Next, obviously engage in class discussion, document those insights. We saw there is a reflection entry for class discussions. So you need the class discussions in order to be able to put in the entries, but also sharing your thoughts and listening to others will really enrich your understanding and provide you with new perspectives. Don't just participate passively, sit there, absorb ideas, like come prepared with ideas, questions, and be open. Maybe you have ideas that are similar to other people. Maybe they're very different. Maybe other people have very different opinions to you, very similar opinions to you, but they all play off one another. So be open, be open to your interpretations and be open to the interpretations of your peers. When it comes to the essays, plan and draft your essays. Use insights from your reflections, from your annotation to really develop thoughtful, well-structured pieces. Think about what you want to say, how best to convey it, whether through a formal essay or a more creative format, but take the time to revise and polish your work afterwards. Ensure that it clearly expresses your ideas and analysis. Your learner portfolio, yes, may not be graded. That said, that doesn't mean that you should make it as good as you can make it. And in order to really sell it later, in order for it to mean as much to you as it could later, these essays, these entries should be as final as possible. They shouldn't be works in progress or they shouldn't be drafts. They should be your final pieces that go into your learner portfolio. Remember that your learner portfolio is a personal and evolving document. Keep it updated, make it meaningful, and let it really reflect your journey through literature. It's more than just a collection of assignments. It's a really dynamic tool for documenting your intellectual growth and your personal engagement with literature. So happy reading and writing. I really enjoy this step. Don't think of it as a chore. It doesn't have a grade like much of the other aspects. So think of it as a way for you to immerse into the literature and use it to really put all your thoughts, ideas, your interpretations into one space. And trust me, it will mean something later. Thank you.